Hello, my name is Ross Jordan. I'm the curatorial manager of the Jane Addams Hull House Museum. Today, the museum is celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the work of all those who have fought past and present to expand access to our democratic institutions. Our staff has selected children's books from the children's corner in the museum's education reform exhibit. The books highlight how demands for justice are interconnected. Racial justice must include commitments to gender justice, LGBTQ rights, economic justice, and peace. The books also encourage adults to have conversations with kids about how they can admit, how they can change and share their voice. The Read Alouds are pre-recorded and will be available on Whole House's new YouTube channel after today's broadcast. If you have any questions about the books, please leave a comment in the chat. And you can visit wholehousemuseum.org to reserve a virtual tour where you can learn more about women's activism and the work Jane Adams did to expand democracy and demand peace. With that said, I hope you're all ready for some great readings from our staff. Welcome everyone. My name is Michael Ramirez and I'm the education manager here at the Jane Addams Hall House Museum. Today, I'll be reading Let the Children March, written by Monica Clark Robinson, illustrated by Frank Morrison. 1963, Birmingham, Alabama. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm spring night, my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom. His brown eyes flashing fire and love, Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job, sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders, but this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church, dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand we marched, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Would I be hurt? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd, run from danger, run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on we marched, we marched, we marched, singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. Hate dogged my heels all that day, its yellowed canine teeth sharp, but courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse or you'll be jailed, the police shouted the first day. Disperse or you'll get wet, the police shouted the second day. Disperse or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day, and even more on the second. My turn wasn't until the third day. After I was sprayed by water stronger than anything I've ever felt, rough hands pushed me forward and I fell to my knees in a police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. King reassured our parents, 
Don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America and for all mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half the kids, we sang, We shall overcome! Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round! And freedom is coming! Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day, and the next, more kids marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Turn the other cheek, we had been taught. Show love where there is hate. The world watched as hate bruised us, but for seven days we walked only in love. The jail swelled to bursting, and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world, Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights I stayed in the jail. Some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore, and my dress was ripped, but my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl. Mama said, your march was what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change was right around the corner. We felt it like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing on a playground I'd never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong, we came. Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Catalano. I'm an educator at Jane Addams Hull House Museum. And today I'll be reading along to A is for Activist, written and illustrated by Inosanto Megara. A is for Activist, Advocate, Ally, Abolitionist, actively answering a call to action. Are you an activist? B is for Banner, bobbing in the sky, billowing in the breeze because you're not shy. C is for co-op, cooperating cultures, creative counter to the corporate vultures. Oh, and cats. Can you find the cats? Little D democracy. More than voting, you'll agree. Dictators detest it. Donkeys don't get it. But you and me, we demand equality. Equal rights. Black, brown, or white. Environmental justice is our right. Where we each live, work, and play, clean and healthy is the way. A feminist fights for fundamental rights. Choice in our future, fairness in our pay, the freedom to flourish in each and every way. G is for grassroots, sprouting from below, sharing nutrients and the water's flow, Below the surface, we are all connected. Stronger together, we grow. Healthy food is a human right. Honeydew, jicama, Havarti cheese, hummus, hot dogs. Hot dogs? Yes. Healthy hot dogs, please. And pizza. Indigenous and immigrant, together we stand tall. We must all be vigilant. An injury to one is an injury to all. J is for justice. Yay for justice. Jia Jing Jiang, Juanita Jamal. Justice for the janitors. Justicia for all. Kings are fine for story time. Knights are fun to play. 
but when we make decisions, we will choose the people's way. L-G-B-T-Q. Love who you choose, cause love is true. Liberate your notions of limited emotions. Celebrate with pride our links of devotion. Megaphones marching. Movimiento music. Hip hip hooray! It must be May Day. N is for no. No, no, no. Yes is what we want. No's what's got to go. No, no, no. Open minds operate best. Critical thinking outside the test. Out of the office and into the street. Organize, educate, occupy. Pro, pro, protest. P, P, peace march. Pow, pow, power to the PP people, yeah. Question coercion, quiz assertion, querying qualities quickly quell distortion. Radical Reds, the headline said. Ruinous rioters, the rumors spread. Rabble rousing riffraff. Really? Sun, soul, solar. Superstar, source of power, sustains plants, animals, and flowers. Stellar fuel for homes, cars, and showers. Silly, selfish scoundrels sucking on dinosaur sludge. Boo. Hiss. T is for trans. Tulips, tassels, tigers, tractors, and tiaras. Trust in the true. The he, she, they, that is you. U is for weekends. U is for wages. U is for workers. Workers' rights. Wait, that's not U. That's W. U is for union. Union, yes. V is for vox. Did you say fox? No, vox. Did you say box? No, vox. Rocks? Blocks? Socks? Vox. Vox of the people. Voice of the populi. Better go see the letter D. Wonderful world. Wonderful we. One cannot be whole. All cannot be free. Unless we delight in diversity. X is for Malcolm. Malcolm X. History's lessons can be complex. Remember Parks. Remember King. Remember Malcolm. And let freedom ring. Y is for you. You, you, youth. Your future, your planet, your rights, your truth. Yes, yes, yes. Z is for Zapatista, of course. The end. All right, so hi everyone, my name is Eddie. I'm one of the educators here at the Jane Addams Whole House Museum. We're, um, we're gonna be reading everyone here um, a story time, and the story that I will be reading is right here. Uh, this is Julian is a Mermaid. This here is by Jessica Love. All right, and to begin, I want to start off with the little introduction to the book inside. So, every Saturday morning, Julian and his abuela go swimming. But the day Julian spies three women on the subway, everything changes. He is entranced by their beautiful hair, their swishy, shimmering mermaid gowns, and their total confidence. When Julian gets home, all he can think about is becoming a mermaid himself. But what would, what will Abuela think? So, a little insert inside. Got this book from our local library. All right. And to begin, here is Julian is a mermaid. This is a boy named Julian, and this is, a, is his abuela. And those are some mermaids. Julian loves mermaids. As you can see here, got three mermaids on the subway. So here we have a little transformation sequence of Julian turning into a mermaid. 
and turn the page. If you imagine the swooshing sounds that this would make, the shh of the little manta ray, of the little school of fish, you know, just imagine you're swimming like a mermaid. And we see the full Julian mermaid transformation. Imagine you are a mermaid, actually getting to swim around, meeting all the cool fish and sea creatures out in the ocean. So, vamonos, mijo. This is, this is our stop. So you can see Abuela right there. And you can see here the three mermaids that Julian met on the train. So, Abuela, did you see the mermaids? I saw them, mijo. So they're walking from the train. Yeah, thinking about the mermaids. A little too cold at the moment, but maybe in the summer, we can like hang out in the pool. Maybe not actually. <laughs> they made it home. Abuela, I am also a mermaid. And you see here, Abuela speaking, I'm gonna take a bath, you be good. So they just made it home. And Abuela, Abuela is going to go take a bath. So, Julian had a good idea. So, you're going to see here, instead of a magical transformation, Julian's going to make what, um, work with what he's got. So he's got some plants, going to turn that into a little crown, some hair maybe. And for the tail, you know, you got some curtains right there. So you can see here, Julian's being very creative. What we see here, Abuela finds Julian. And she says, oh. And then Julian says, uh-oh. Julian's not really sure what's going on, but then Abuela comes back out and she says, come on, mijo, wonder where they're going. See here? For me, Abuela, for you, mijo. So you can see Abuela's giving Julian what looks like here, a necklace. They're going out somewhere. Wonder where they're going. Where are we going, says Julian. You'll see, says Abuela. You see here, they're walking down the street, seeing some familiar faces. Oh, two dockies right there. Mermaids, whispers Julian. See all the cool outfits right there. Abuela says, like you, mijo, let's go join them. You can see a whole crowd of parade, super cool, all the cool costumes, things like that. And they do. So you can see here, they're at the beach, Julian and his mermaid gear, all the other mermaids, all the sea creatures out there. Super cool. And that there was Julian is a mermaid. So yeah.
So that is one of our favorite books here at the Jane Addams Whole House Museum. Um, yeah, definitely check it out. Maybe check it out from your local library. Pick it up from your local bookstore. And yeah, thank you so much for sitting down with us here today. Have a good day. Hello, my name is Nadia Moraga. I'm an educator at Whole House. And today I'm going to be reading you The Journey by Francesca Sana. I live with my family in a city close to the sea. Every summer we used to spend many weekends at the beach, but we never go there anymore because last year our lives changed forever. The war began. Every day bad things started happening around us and soon there was nothing but chaos. And one day the war took my father. Since that day, everything has become darker, and my mother has become more and more worried. The other day, one of my mother's friends told her that many people are leaving. They are trying to escape to another country, a country far away with high mountains. What is this place, we ask our mother. It is a safe place, she tells us. And where is this place, we ask again. She shows us pictures of strange cities, strange forests, and strange animals until she finally sighs. We will go there and not be frightened anymore. We don't want to leave, but our mother tells us it will be a great adventure. We put everything we have in suitcases and say goodbye to everyone we know. We leave at night to avoid being seen and keep moving for many days. The further we go, the more we leave behind. We finally arrive at the border. It is an enormous wall and we must climb over it. But oh no, you are not allowed to cross the border. Go back, shouts an angry guard. We have nowhere to go and we are very tired. In the darkness, the noises of the forest scare me. But mother is with us and she is never scared. We close our eyes and finally fall asleep. Shouting wakes us up. It's the guards. They are looking for us and we must hide. Quick, this way, whispers our mother. We run and run until a man we have never seen before appears. Mother gives him some money and he takes us over the border. It is dark and nobody sees us. Our journey is not over yet, our mother tells us. The sea stretches far and wide ahead of us, and we must cross it. How will this be possible? We have boarded a ferry with so many people. There is not much space, and it rains every day. But we tell each other stories, tales of terrible and dangerous monsters that hide beneath our boat, ready to gobble us up if the boat capsizes. The boat rocks and rocks as the waves grow bigger and bigger. It feels like the sea will never end. We tell each other new stories, stories about the land we are heading to, where the big green forests are filled with kind fairies that dance and give us magic spells to end the war. As the sun rises, we see land for the first time in days. The boat rocks silently to shore. Our mother tells us we are very lucky to still be together. Is this the place where we, we will be safe, we ask? It is close, she says with a tired smile. We travel for more days and more nights, crossing many borders. From the train, I look up to the birds that seem to be following us. They are migrating just like us, and their journey is very long too, but they don't have to cross any borders. 
I hope one day, like these birds, we will find a new home, a home where we can be safe and begin our story again. Hola a todos y bienvenidos. Me llamo Stefan Cuevas Caizabano y soy un educador en el Jane Addams Hall House Museum. Um, y hoy voy a leer un cuento que se llama Última Parada de la calle Market. Y el autor es Matt de la Peña y aquí está nuestros protagonistas. En la versión de inglés este niño se llama uh, CJ pero en el español es Jackson. Um, no más un cosa distinta, pero lo demás se queda lo mismo. Jackson empujó la puerta de la iglesia para salir y bajó los escalones saltando. Fuera, el aire olía a libertad, pero también a lluvia, que salpicaba la camisa de Jackson y resbalaba por su nariz. Aquí está. Aquí está Jackson y aquí está la abuela de Jackson. Se resguardó bajo el paraguas de su abuela, Nana, y dijo, ¿Por qué tenemos que esperar al autobús bajo esta lluvia? Los árboles también sienten sed, le contestó su abuela. ¿Ves ese árbol grande viviendo a través de un pajita? Jackson miró a su alrededor una y otra vez, pero no logró encontrar la pajita. Aquí está Jackson y su abuela y el árbol. Está hablando su abuela. Desde la parada del autobús podía ver el agua bañar los pétalos de las flores y la lluvia chapotear en las paredes de un coche estacionado cerca. Su amigo Colby Subió al coche, saludó a Jackson con la mano y se marchó con su papá. Abuela, ¿por qué nosotros no tenemos coche? Y aquí en el, en el coche es Colby, Jackson, mi abuela, y están esperando al autobús. Y todavía sigue lloviendo. Pero hijo, ¿para qué lo queremos? Tenemos un autobús Lance y Amos y al señor Dennis, que siempre te enseñó un nuevo truco de magia. El autobús chirió y detuvo frente a ellos. Humo descendió ligeramente y las puertas, las puertas se abrieron de par en par. Por fin llegó el autobús y aquí está Jackson, subió primero, y aquí está su abuela y el señor Dennis, que maneja el autobús. ¿Qué es esto que veo? Preguntó el señor Dennis sacando una moneda detrás de la oreja de Jackson y depositándolo en la palma de su mano. Nana se rió con risa profunda y lo hizo un señal a Jackson para que tomara un asiento. Se sentaron en la entrada. El hombre que estaba frente a ellos afinaba un guitarra. Un señor mayor con bulos llevaba mariposas en un frasco. Nana sonrió a todos y los dio las buenas tardes. Se aseguró que Jackson también lo hiciera. Aquí está el señor Dennis con la moneda, Jackson, abuela, y ya se subieron en el autobús. Ahí en la entrada entre todas las personas que acaba de conocer. El autobús arrancó y frenó. Arrancó y nuevamente se detuvo. Nana tarareaba mientras tejía. ¿Por qué siempre tenemos que venir aquí después de la iglesia? Preguntó Jackson. Miguel y Colby nunca tenían que ir a ningún parte. Pues lo lamento mucho por ellos, dijo Nana. Nunca conocieran a Bobo, ni al hombre de las gafas de sol, ni a Trixie, que estrena un nuevo sombrero. Jackson miró a través de la ventanilla y sintió lástima de sí mismo. Contemplaba los coches que pasaban a ambos lados y unos chicos que con sus bicis subían y bajaban el bordillo de la acera. Y aquí está 
Nana, Jackson y los otros pasajeros en el autobús. Un hombre y su perro con manchas subieron al autobús. Jackson le ofreció su asiento. ¿Por qué ese hombre no puede ver? Hijo, ¿cómo que no puede ver? Lo dijo su abuela. Algunas personas pueden ver al mundo con sus oídos. Eso es verdad. Y con la nariz también, dijo el hombre, ofertando al aire. ¿Qué perfume tan fino llevas puesto hoy, señora? Nana estrechó la mano del hombre y se rió con su risa profunda. Y aquí está el hombre y su perro. A continuación, subieron dos chicos. Jack se quedó observándolos hasta que se detuvieron en la parte de atrás. ¿Cómo me gustaría tener de esos? Dijo Nana. Dejó un lado de su tejido. ¿Y para qué? Justo frente a ti los tienes en vivo. ¿Por qué no lo pides al señor que nos toca algo? Jackson no tuvo que hacerlo. El guitarrista ya había comenzado a pulsar las cuerdas y a tocar una canción. Para sentir la magia de la música, susurró el hombre ciego. Es mejor cerrar los ojos. Nenaz cerró los suyos y también lo hizo Jackson. Y el perro con manchas. Aquí están los dos chicos que subieron y se fueron hasta atrás. El hombre con la guitarra, el hombre ciego, Jackson, el perro. Y en la oscuridad, el ritmo transportó a Jackson hacia el exterior del autobús, fuera de la orgullosa ciudad. Vio los colores de un puesto de sol moviéndose en el babián de las olas. Vio una familia de halcones que surcaban el cielo. Vio las mariposas de la señora mayor bailando lib libres en la luz de la luna. Jackson sintió que su pecho se hinchaba. Se dejó llevar por el sonido que lo envolvió en su mágica. Y aquí está Jackson bailando con los halcones y las mariposas en la luna. La canción terminó y Jackson abrió los ojos. Todos en el autobús comenzaron a aplaudir, incluso los chicos del parte de atrás. Nana miró y de reojo la moneda que Jackson tenía en la mano. Jackson la dejó, la, la dejó caer en el sombrero del hombre. Última parada de la calle Market, anunció el señor Dennis. está Jackson, su moneda, mi guitarrista. Y Jackson y su abuela ya se bajaron del autobús. Jackson bajó del autobús y miró a su alrededor. Aceras desmoronadas y puertas destarteladas, vidrieras marcadas con graffiti y tiendas clausuradas. Se agarró de la mano de su abuela. ¿Por qué este lugar siempre está tan sucio? Ella sonrió y señor señaló a dirección al cielo. A veces, cuando la su suciedad te rodea, Jackson, te hace apreciar mejor lo que es realmente bello. Y aquí se llegaron. Y aquí estaba Jackson y abuela. En ese momento, Jackson vio un arco iris que se elevaba sobre el comedor social. Se preguntó cómo su abuela siempre encontraba belleza donde a él ni siquiera se le ocurría buscar. Volvió a mirar a su alrededor. Vio el autobús que doblaba a la esquina y se perdía a lo lejos. Las farolas de la calle rotas, pero aún proyectando su intensa luz. Y a las sombras de los gatos callejoneros que se movían por las fachadas. Y aquí está el arco iris. Y Jackson y su abuela. 
pensó que escucharía la risa profunda de su abuela, pero no fue así. Le pasó la mano por la cabeza y lo dijo, yo también, Jackson. Vamos, entramos. Son voluntarios de un cocina social. Y aquí comen tus amigos y aquí comen ellos. Y cuando acaban, de nuevo van a esperar el autobús. Espero que te gustó el cuento. Sí, es una historia muy bonita de Jackson y su abuela. Y que no hay, nunca hay vergüenza en tomar el, el camión, el autobús. Esto es un copia de museo, pero también la puedes encontrar en Amazon o espero que encuentres unas uh, librerías que lo venden a uh, locales. Pero cuando abrimos el museo otra vez, espero que vienes y si puedes comprar una copia. También la tenemos en inglés, español, lo que sea. Um, My name is Ross Jordan. I'm the curatorial manager and in, interim director of the Jane Addams Holmes Museum. And today I'll be reading Hip Hop Lollipop by Susan McElroy, Martinari, and Brian Pinkney. Mama says, Lollipop, stop, stop. Jumping, snapping, nonstop. Arms and shoulders pop and lock. Lolly's dancing hip hop. Hands tutting, knees jutting, arms cranking, body swanking, hip gyration, exultation. Mama says, time for bed. Lolly's arms overhead, dancing down the long hall, bouncing off the tall wall. At big sister's doorway, Lolly stops to say, hey. Tasha's jam is techno. She glides heel to toe in slow mo. Flashing her a big grin, Lolly's quick to jump in. Arms and shoulders pop and lock, sisters dancing hip hop. The clock upon the wall chimes. Daddy calls, it's bedtime. Teeth brushing, music crushing, bass thumping, shoulders pumping, head rotation, jubilation. On the floor, copper snores, lolly drops to all fours. Boo boo pounces on her back, curls up snug to take a nap. Lolly yawns, rests her head, as if the dog's a comfy bed. Mama scoops her up high, up into the sky. Sky, then swings Lolly down low. In your room you go. Daddy calls, it's fun, hon, but turn the music down some. Ollie finds her PJs, blows kisses to the DJ, spins the music low, low. She can still hear it though. Pulls the covers up tight, shouts out loud, night, night.
That's when daddy comes in, turns the lights to dim, dim. Leans across the bed, kisses Lolly's forehead. Dying deeply, oh so sleepy. Last rotation, relaxation. Eyes close, but just then. Jumping, snapping nonstop. Lolly's dreaming hip hop. Awesome. Well, we want to thank everyone today for joining and hope you enjoyed our Jane Addams Hall House Museum story time. We hope these stories got you all thinking more about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., how you can fight for justice in your own cities and neighborhoods, and the stories and voices that you can uplift. To stay up to date on future events like this one, you can join our mailing list on our website, hullhousemuseum.org. And also, if you like this event, let us know as we love to hear feedback from visitors and viewers like you all. Um, we hope everyone enjoys the rest of your Sunday and happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day.